Greetings, I'm Jabbers. And I'm the captain. And we're back again at Anderton's in sunny Guildfordshire, England. We certainly under are. Under the gaze of the Queen. To bring to you this wonderful Headrush pedal board. So, Headrush. Uh, we first saw this at the NAMM show in 2017. Uh, it's a multi-effects guitar floorboard. Um, it is a new brand, Headrush, but they are, uh, you may have heard of the company that have provided the sort of software platform for this. So 11 Rack, uh, very well respected kind of, again, guitar multi-effects uh, unit from yesteryear, uh, have sort of co-opt with, with Headrush um, in the sense of they've provided the code for Headrush to use to create this unit. I suppose you'd see that in the gaming industry, wouldn't you, where certain games like Doom are powered by certain engines oh, are they? That, that operate the whole system. I didn't know that. But uh, we've had a little five minute chat to the designer of Headrush over Skype. He's uh, based in Germany, or at least the, the guy who did a lot of the coding. And he was very keen to sort of say that, that whilst 11 Rack has provided the sort of the foundations for this, uh, he's been given sort of such deep access to the code that he's been able to sort of improve it and do lots of stuff with this that you couldn't do on uh, the original 11 Rack stuff. Deep so, access. Deep access. Um, you're going to hear us mucking around with this in a couple of different ways. The first way that we're mucking around with this is DI'd straight into our interface. So imagine uh, that you're using this either in a solely recording studio environment or you're playing the kind of venues and stuff where you're just going to give the sound man your kind of stereo DI and let all the amp modeling and everything take place in here. Perfect for the ubiquitous city gig where you get 20 minutes on stage to play of which you get two minutes sound check. <laughs> you go, here are my leads. Plug them into your thing. We are going to also plug into a clean valve amplifier and just show what this would do as um, as a guitar effects, you know, uh, alternative uh, to having individual pedals if you want to. Um, but I guess to sort of summarise what uh, Rob and I are instantly liking about this and how this is unique uh, as it stands at the moment is everything that we, or pretty much everything that you need to do to use this machine is done from the touch screen, which is new. kind of the first company that does this kind of thing that I think have actually tried to solve genuine issues rather than invent things yeah. that they then solve that you didn't need solving. So, so for example, when you've got a floor unit, the main issue is it's on the floor. And if you're gigging, you can't just get down it right, let me just change all that stuff I wanted yeah. to change because the room sounds a bit bassier or it's got a real weird high frequency. Yeah. But now, stood up, you can affect all the parameters of everything on the board. Yep, so I'll show you how you do that by basically, you know, holding down types of effects and then using the, um, the pedals and the expression pedal to change parameters. Um, but first and foremost, I guess, this is a very, we'll just take you over, this is a very simple graphical interface here. It's WYSIWYGLY. on close-up cam. Yes, you can see on close-up cam there. This is our chain. So you can see we've got some effects blocks that have effects in them, some empty ones that we could add effects to, and we've got a guitar amplifier and a 4x12 cabinet here. It's a bit like a shopping list. It does, and it's, they're ever so, ever so easy to use. You can see the empty blocks here. I can add stuff by just tapping an empty block, and it comes up with a list of you know, different types of pedal or effect that I could put in there, or amp modeling. Uh, if the block is already filled with something, again, I can double tap that, and I can change uh, the type of pedal that's in there. I can drag pedals around, so if I want to put stuff uh, in a different effects block, or I want, more importantly, I guess if I want to put stuff after the amp or before the amplifier, I can do. Say, for example, I wanted to put this stereo doubler before the amplifier. You just drag just it. Do that. How so good that's is that? Not difficult to do, um, and it's very intuitive. As I, if I'm able to get hands on rather than feet on. Uh, as I adjust, you know, as I pick different effects, you'll see that the parameters down the right-hand side of the screen change. Uh, so, and then these three knobs would correspond to the three areas there, as Rob said. Uh, 
So that's really, really simple. Uh, you heard Rob in this opening jam playing this, this thing that we'd done called Chapper's Lead, which if I remember rightly is uh, some sort of uh, copy of a Soldano SL100 in its sort of maxed overdrive mode through an old, I think it was a greenback loaded 4x12. Mm. Got hundreds of different amp models that you can choose from in here. Um, and we got a doubler on too, just to fatten the load. Fatten the load. Uh, so actually listen to this in stereo because you get the full effect of the doubler there. But one of the things that Rob just mentioned, which we will we'll dive in fairly early on here to show you. It is that there is a very cool way of adjusting parameters. And it's unique. I don't think anyone else has done it. I don't know. I think Helix have something similar. Do they? Um, well, we'll find out. Yeah. So anyway, so let's say I wanted to adjust a reverb parameter. Yep. Uh, but I can't stop playing because... So you want to make you know, it really long. So... Or loads of level or something. Here is the switch that's been assigned to the reverb. You can tell it, you can see it's blue and it says air reeve underneath it. So I hold that down like this. Now what happens is the, is the pedals change. So I've got uh, four parameters, time, size, color, and mix on these buttons and an exit button here. So if I wanted to change the size, I would change the size. Use this to get the desired. I mean, don't know, that's, <laughs> so that's where it is. Uh, hit the exit button, boom. Now that's cool. Um, that is cool, because that is simple, and it's, you know, really didn't take any form of deep editing. You didn't no. need to sort of go, oh, I'll change it at the end of this song when I can quickly knit down and adjust it. You can literally just do that on the fly. So if you, if you step on the, uh, the gain, uh, most of the, all the gains coming from the amp. So if you step on the amp, amp, yeah. Then can we can we change how what much? What have we got? Gain? Here? Preamp, yeah. Drive. So preamp gain, is, that is it. So it's, so you, again, I can change. So if I go, so if I go, if you back it off, will I get more of a crunch? So so. Good. my head wasn't over any of that as I was doing this but that's that was, great it's really really simple yeah um tons of different you know what that does opens up windows and doors yeah uh, for all sorts of writing creativity if you again I, I won't go through every single um amp model and effect that's in here now you can I'll put a link in the description below where you can go and find out a full list of that but trust me there's it's just all of them including some weird ones as well in fact I, t I won't um I won't. Uh, Sorry, I just noticed if you tap tempo, it changes the amount. So if you if you Literally. had a slight OCD moment where you're going, You'd have a real I, won I wonder if I can actually do yeah. <laughs> seventy two point four millisecond uh, taps. No, you couldn't see. Um, let's see if I can find. There were some weird like bit crush type effects in here. Uh, can't find them. Can't find. Here we go. Eight bit crush. So again, do it. Do it. Well, it's going to sound it's crap. It's going to make you. I have absolutely no idea what that did. I just hadn't seen those types of effects in other in other things. So I'm going to get rid of that now. In fact, uh, what do I, I double tap it? That's right, and I can just delete it if I want to delete that effect. So it's really, really, really simple. Uh, so simple, in fact, that earlier Rob and I did another patch called this one's called Chapper's Lead. Guess what it's called? And I don't want. I don't. I'm want to actually changes. slightly Captain. emotionally devastated that it wasn't Captain's Crunch. Aha! So can I have the lead, please, sir? So still, you're, you're hearing this again through uh, straight... 
<laughs> straight into the DI. Uh, now I have done something slightly different here, which I'll show you. So first of all, it's just a Fender. So I had uh, a little, uh, like a tube screamery type overdrive. It's a real deep access tone, you know. It's a deep access tone. Yes. But what you'll notice is one of my effects blocks is called effects loop. And what I've done is using the effects loop ins and outs on the back. Now this has one effects loop. Again, I think products like Helix have more, um, but of course you can chain multiple effects up within an effects loop if you yeah. want to add more. I've got on the floor down here, Pete's uh, Greer Lightspeed. Do you want me to whack it on for you? Uh, if you just turn, yeah, turn it on so it's on all the time. Okay. So what you do is you'd leave the, the pedal on the floor all the time and then I just engage the, the uh, effect sort of block called effects loop. So here's, here's without, and then with. And what happens if you hold down on the effects loop button to alter, does, does it give you a... It, it, uh... it can't, can it? What would it do? Oh, oh it just does. effects loop mix. Oh, that's brilliant. So, in fact, you've got you've That's got awesome. by the things you've got send and return levels. So you can you can mess with the amount of yeah. any effect in your loop. That's really cool. Um, so you could put any type of effect through the effects loop. Yeah. Um, you've got things like uh, over here. We've got things like a noise gate. Now I don't. I'm not a big fan of noise gates, so I've turned mine all the way off, which is potentially well, why you're you here. Well, you occasionally bound the cam. Very occasionally, um, and you can save literally thousands of your your own preferred blocks you can they're called rigs rather than presets and then you've got within the menu you've got things called set lists so you can say right and a set list contain a number of can can contain a number of rigs uh let's just turn that distortion off a second um and like a lot of, in fact, probably all of its contemporary, uh, you know, alternative units, uh, there is a head rush community in the cloud where you can upload your uh, favorite presets to it and download other people's favorite presets and just, you know, share share for free. Um, if Headrush aren't bringing out a sister coffee company, they're missing a huge marketing concept right there. So. A sister coffee company. Yeah, Headrush Coffee just works. Shampoo. Just a, right, Headrush shampoo. Headrush shampoo. Yeah. And, uh, you Head know, rush you know. cocaine. Yeah, absolutely. Head rush fags. Head rush heroin. That, when you, you never it's smoked, Moorish. did you? When I was a kid, and I, well, not a kid, obviously, but you know, when I was a, a naughty teenager, you used to have the old fag first one, and you go, whoa, head rush! Like that. That's what you used to do in the bus shelter. That's what Lee used to do. Apparently. In... My beer's laughing, he's like, I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I never have. So, I know, you've been so good. I'm just... You've been so good. I'm a wrong one. Um, so look, that's... I've got a question, Lee. Yes, go on. Because you're going to go, so that's that's pretty much it. Well, we're going to go over to the amp, but oh, right. ask well, I was a just going to say, how much did it cost? It's eight ninety nine. So again, it's really competitive. It, it's yes. it's. Um, I kind of think that you know, its contemporaries <laughs> will be. Um, its most obvious contemporary is going to be Helix. Yeah. Just purely and simply because it looks it's in such a similar form. So Helix LT and full Helix. So it's very well priced compared to those. It's the same sort of money as Helix LT. Um, I guess its contemporaries will, will be Axe FX and uh, Kemper and Positive Grid as well, albeit that um, Kemper and Positive Grid don't really do like a, a floorboardy mm. version. But it's, you know, the idea of it being able to either be you know, a DI thing or into an amp makes it more of a Helix alternative. And I like I that there is enough width here that maybe mm. even Paul Gilbert could use it. Well, I like a lot that again, it's got this, uh, it's got this kind of um, fairly, I mean, unbelievably easy to see color correlated. Yeah. So you, you know that, for example, anything um, up the top here that's red is, is red. red here. And, and just in case you weren't sure, let's say you had, like we've got, um, a couple of things that are green on here. We've got the, the delay and the cab sim. Under, underneath it, it also tells you 
what it is. So if you're thinking, yeah. oh, I can't remember which green one is my delay, it will tell you above which is your delay. And you, you don't program that. So I mean, as that long just... as you're not colorblind and you can read, yeah. <laughs> you're absolutely sorted. If you're colorblind and can't read... Don't buy this um, product. I, sus- I don't know. Do you think there are many guitar players out there that are colorblind and can't read? Absolutely. Probably, Probably loads. Loads of them. Pete Honore says Pete Honore he's Honore is colorblind, colorblind and, and can't read. Yeah. It's a, to be honest, it's a wonder he can pull his pants down to have a <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's... <laughs> uh, <laughs> You can, and, and, yeah, and you can, if for whatever reason, the DR has literally <laughs> pulled his pants down behind the camera. Marvellous. Um, if for some reason you don't like the, the default colour assignments on here, you can change them. We've got a looper, and we haven't just got like a 25 second looper or a 40 second looper, which is I think what you get on Kemper. We've got a 20 minute looper, which actually if I press here, you can see again, uh, love the fact again all the buttons immediately show you what's start what's record yeah look at that you know I love it I've got it. a question Lee go on what would you loop for 20 minutes um, it's not so much it, I, I think it's to do with uh, layering loops and that's where your 20 minutes gets used up I mean right. I, I'm, I'm kind of with you yeah. in that I'm, I remember people like Boss and Digitech going four hour loop time like, well, and, and, you, and you'd be like yeah but, and I'm always got the end bar and oh I quite I missed it I was like a little bit any, any, let me do it again any prog rock song basically right. that's why it needs such a probably be an easy it's for it's for prog metal it's a Tosca loop switch it is um, so look uh, what we're going to do now oh Jesus <laughs> If you could see what we could see, it's very off-putting. You know what? And it's certainly not giving me a head rush. Denmark is famous for its bacon, but it's also famous for its sausage in this room. So, <laughs> so um, what did this hold? This did something cool, didn't it? Hold for view, exit. Oh, that's right. Hold, I saw this thing, hold for view, and I thought, I remember this doing something cool when I touched it before. I can toggle between whether I want the view to be uh, all the different, you know, pedals doing, you know, showing me rig up and down and all that kind of malarkey, or just a very simplistic one where I can jump to different things, set list, hybrid, rig. You know what this is? This is the the floor preamp for guys who've been using just a really traditional setup for years and years and years, and they don't want convoluted, confusing, you know, systems on the floor that you've got to spend an hour reading in manual to understand. This is really WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. So there's, I mean, I said, that's, we, we, we'll, we're not going to do, uh, you'll have to find your own little Headrush retailer or go to the Headrush uh, website and check out some of the other presets. As I said, there, there are millions and millions. Uh, I'll tell you what, I, again, just to give you a flavour, um, here is the list of different amps that you can muck around with. Wow. So you can see there's, uh, we've got variants of Fender amps, Tweed amps, Blackface amps, we've got Marshall amps, Plexis. Blue Line Scoop, I think Pete was doing some of that a couple of days ago. Probably. Uh, Soldanos, uh, Tread Plates, a Boogie stuff. I'm not sure what RB, RB, what was that, Reinhardt Bogner, do you think? Uh, Rabia Bassard. Could be <laughs> Rabia Bassard. Um, anyway, yeah, do you know what, I think that's Bogner, but whatever. Um, well, there you go. And then, I like it. again, Billions and billions of different cabinet modes, so you can change cabinet, you can change the microphone. Uh, Is it heavy? No. Can you hold that and I'll hold this end? Ready? One, two, three. It is heavy. Oh, it is heavy. Yeah, it's It's not heavy. Actually, do you know what? It's it's heavy. That's really heavy. That's that's heavier than I thought. It's a lot heavier than I thought it was going to be. We've probably messed up the camera angle now. That's fine. He doesn't need to film anything. He probably does. This way, this way, this way, this way. To me. To me, to you, to me, to you. So it's quite well made then. Yes. Um... Let's turn this, if the wonderful Rabir would mute the speaker in here, um, and I will go to a blank patch and turn this amp on. And actually, this, uh, I, what, I, what I am going to do, I am going to turn everything off. So you can watch me doing this if you like. It's this simple. So I'm getting rid of everything. Uh, particularly what I don't want are um, cabinet and amp modelling if I'm going to be actually running it through an amp. Not that you can't use them, it's just that it's it's not really the done thing, is it, Mr no, Chapman? one would not do that thing. So, here we are. In fact, I've still even got the reverb on here, so I'll get rid of the reverb as well. Okay, cool. So, here we are. We have a blank palette, a blank canvas. Anything we want to add to this amp, we can do. So, this is kind of... 
Imagine now, forget using this for DI'd recording. Imagine you're just thinking, do you know what? I want to put together, you know, a, a comprehensive pedal board, but I don't want to spend thousands of pounds buying switches and power supplies and all that kind of stuff. I want to do it a sort of a semi-affordable way. This would be an option. So there we are. Rob's jumped straight in and gone, what shall we add straight away? So default mono, yeah, whatever you want. Yeah, default mono is going to be good. I've immediately changed my mind about this vibrato. You don't like it? No, I, I, I don't like that. So no, I'm just like going that. to I'm not a big vibrato. vibrato fan. Yes. Have you I seen, do. so now, I don't want to cast dispersions on Rob Chapman here, but I wouldn't say he's the most technically minded person I've ever met. And uh, watch, what's, look at what's occurring. It's Rob with minimal instruction, like a monkey trying to comb its hair, <laughs> has literally worked out how to add effects. In a minute, we're going to get Rob a mirror and see if he actually can experience self. <laughs> experience <laughs> self. Play that sound. <laughs> all the distortion before the reverb, otherwise it's going to sound weird. I liked that. That was rubbish. I want a different one. I like a bit of fuzz. Well, not a Black Op is. Black Ops. Yeah, Secret Operations. Too. Donald Trump try, style. Right, you know what, I'm going to inters intersperse here and just go, right, here is what you would probably do uh, if you just wanted something. Uh, I want sort of, actually, I don't... You want full drive. I'm going to delete, to. that's what I need to do. I need to delete and then add in some green distortion because green distortion is... It's the best colour of the Tube screamery. <laughs> Change the reverb. If no, I can. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I want to change. I want to give you a, a delay. Can I have the reverb last though? Yes. Of everything. So, and the reverb probably wants to be a bit lower in the mix, um, but do you know you don't have to have them consecutively? You can I'm have learning, gaps in between. I'm learning it experientially, matter. so I step love by it. step. going to go to air reverb. That's good, isn't it? It's really clever. It's I really, mean, really easy to use and that's quite a pleasing sensation. That's that's the nicest thing. You I know, feel like I'm more enjoying the sounds and the creativity rather than having to learn something. Yeah, and, and you know, Rob and I typically when we're doing these demos, we, do, we get half an hour with the product before to sort yeah, of try yeah. and go, hey, let's show you. So, I know this won't be as slick as perhaps a demonstration from someone that's had weeks with this that's product. That's fine, people don't watch us for a slick demonstration, Lee. But I, but I think it's always indicative. If we get, if we get like 75, 80% into it in a video, and we've done that in half an hour, <laughs> you can kind of see that, you, know, you can imagine if you had like a day to spend with this, you, yes. you'd have it upside down and back to front. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
let me get you a let me just sign you out so I'll get you a more Rob Chapman sound. I actually was quite liking that that sound. Oh, you want to stay with that? Do you? Well, I was going to gain. I was going to give you something a bit, just a bit different. Hey man, I'm not all about the games. Oh, does it? Does the thread not even do anything? As I said, this might be just looking like a middle-aged man pressing buttons on it. But I hope you're getting just again how easy this is to do. So let's uh, let's get rid of this distortion effect and let's add in a heavier one. Uh, DC distortion. Let's see what we've got in here. Is that better Full than Marvel? gain. I don't know. Probably it's the back. Is that good? It's fun. It's cool, isn't it? There you go. There's there's like a high gainy, big old fashioned lead sound. Call that Chappers plays pop. <laughs> plays <laughs> pop. That's a great idea, which is an old Cheggers gag. Um, I think that's pretty much drawn us to the end of our little demo here. Um, I mean, there are tons of stuff that I could show you in the sort of deep editing <coughs> stuff, which um, were very, very clever. Some of the things that, were, that you might be asking, this little tail button here allows us to turn on or off whether or not echoes and reverbs will spill into the next preset when we do it. We've got some clever stuff to do with routing. You'll see again, if you look at close up camera, this is the standard routing where all your effects are essentially in one chain. 
Uh, this is a, a mixed route so that actually you can have some effects, then split it into stereo, mm. including running different amp models on each side of the chain. So, you know, your left amp model would be different to your right amp model. Another way of having some stereo effects and then summing it into mono. Uh, but, you know, we could talk all day about this. Yeah, some of the, some of the cool features that you can do in the global menu are setting a default so that... Um, your DI outputs, your balanced DI outputs would always have your amp and cabinet emulation on them, but your main line output that might be going to an amplifier would ignore those mm. um, effect blocks, mm. giving you the option to say, yeah, even though I am going to gig with a regular amplifier, I'm still going to give the sound man his feed. Sure. Always good to feed your, your sound guy. Yeah. Right? That's I, what I would do. It, I think it's clever. It's, you know, again, we'll get a uh, let's get a little scan of the back of the amplifier so you can see. You know, it's got full MIDI, USB, all the various I/O on the back. There what you more go. is there to say? I, do you know what? The only thing I don't know is when we're likely to see these in the shops. Soon, I think, in June. Soon, we're going to see these in the shops in June. And what's June. It? And now it's May, so and I, I suspect, won't even be here in June. Oh, where will you be? I'll be in America. Living in America. Ow! How? I'm touring the West Coast. He is. Um, I'm going to come back fat. <laughs> I'm going to eat so many wrong things. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. So, look, I, I, I like it. Do you know what? Um, this has actually come a long way since the, the, the one that, that Pete and I saw at the NAM show was obviously a fairly was it early plastic version. Plastic bands and a bit of crayons. Uh, it? it didn't look quite the same as this, and I don't think the, the software had been quite so tweaked because Pete and I were a bit like meh after the NAM show, but I'm a lot less meh. You're a bit less now. meh. I must admit, you know, they, this, is, this is cat amongst the pigeon stuff because it really is now. Do you go Helix? Do you go Headrush? It's an avian-destroying feline. You know, what is it that people are going to prefer? I'm sure once these have been out in the market for a few weeks, people will start going, oh, Headrush does this better, and Helix does this better, and, and, and it'll become a little bit... But right now, it's a toughie. It's a toughie. But you know what I really like isn't a toughie? Is What's not which toughie? plectrum will fly first? The Paul Gilbert, or the Rob Chapman Signature Gravity Plec, or, or the pink Lee Anderson Stelrin? Yes, ready for this? Yeah, Three. Wait. Votes, please. Vote. In the now, comment section I'm going, below. Hang on, it's furthest back this way. We've yeah, got to be scientific. Way. Okay, please scientific. Vote. Which plectrum? Is in the comment section below. Before I do this, do you think we'll travel the furthest? Ready? Three. The pink one. Two. One. The gravity. The gravity by a long way, which I think just goes to show the quality of the gravity Absolutely. plectrum. Absolutely, it's worth four pounds of anybody's money. I've been Rob Chappers. And I've been the captain. Tell me about Rory. So he uh, edits videos. Rory's awesome. <laughs> <laughs>